So we're going to get into proving trigonometric identities. And the idea of an identity is really not that foreign to us if you think back far enough to your algebra experience. Just for example, these three things right here. We know that by property of exponents, x squared times x to the fourth is equal to x to the sixth. So those two expressions are equal for all values of x that are possible. So that is an example of an identity. And the other two are just obtained by multiplying. So like I said, the idea of an identity is really not that foreign to us. So we're going to be looking at several ways of establishing the identity or proving the identity, I should say. And usually it's going to involve taking one side of the equation, which is going to be more complicated, and trying to whittle it down to get to the right-hand side. So one way to do this, the usual way to do this, pick one side, use identities, simplify, whatever, and hopefully you end up with the other side. Now, sometimes that's not going to be possible. So sometimes we have to be willing to work on both sides of the equation in order to get them both down to something that is equal. That's a little bit more rare. We'll see if we ever have to do that here. And the valid steps that we're going to be using. So keep in mind what steps you've used to simplify expressions in the past. You can replace expressions using an identity. That's going to come up sometimes. Most of the rest is just using algebra. Note that one thing we are never allowed to do is to multiply both sides of an equation by a variable. And the reason is we want to make sure that we never multiply by zero because multiplying two equations by zero doesn't do anything for us. So instead of multiplying by a common denominator, for example, we would simplify the fraction as best as we can. So with that said, let's look at a couple examples here. So number one here, notice that we have this complicated left side is equal to the right side. So I'm going to be working with the left hand, left hand side here. And what I notice is that if I look at the terms, I can factor out a sine of x. And when I factor out sine of x, I have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Now that should look familiar to us because we know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So just to justify each step here, I'm going to say I got this by factoring. And then I am going to, very important, I'm going to put an equal sign there. I'm going to replace sine squared plus cosine squared with a 1, and that is because of the Pythagorean identity. And then, well, I know anything times 1 is itself, so that means we're done. And there's really no need to justify there. So this identity is proven, which means knowing that I have the left-hand side or the right-hand side to choose from, I would choose to use the right-hand side because it is much simpler. So thanks for watching this first example, and we'll do more in, in next videos.